Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Insightly's uh, CRM for uh, solar companies uh, demo. Um, I'm Tony, and with me I've got Wes, and we're delighted that you could join us this morning. Um, today's session will take about 30 minutes. We'll run through the demo first and then take questions um, at the end. If you'd like to submit a question uh, during the demo, please use the Q&A function on your screen, and we will answer as many as we can at the close of the session. Before we jump in, I wanted to talk briefly about some of the benefits that our customers have experienced in using Insightly uh, CRM. Uh, we have more than 1,200 users in over 100 solar companies worldwide. Some of these companies are manufacturers that outsource sales or installation or both. Uh, some are sales and installation companies and source from multiple manufacturers. And others, others are fully integrated manufacturers, sellers, installers and services of solar panels. Throughout the year, we regularly run a series of voice of the customer or what we call um, customer love surveys where we ask our customers to tell us uh, how Insightly CRM has helped improve um, businesses um, and help them grow uh, faster than before. And we've surveyed recently about 1600 companies uh, which currently include more than um, 100 solar of our solar companies um, uh, and you can see these here on uh, some of these are listed here on the on the slide now one of the primary concerns of a solar company before implementing a CRM either for the first time or when replacing an existing one is whether the teams will actually use it I'm sure you've all heard many cautionary tales about failed CRM implementations many of which were abandoned because sim teams simply didn't use it or it didn't seem to meet the needs of the business. Um, at Insight, we believe that first and foremost, your implementation is tailored to meet the specific needs of your business um, and that the users are trained to use it. Um, we, make, we give great care and attention to uh, ensure that uh, our customers get up and running fast. We dedicate uh, customer success managers to ensure that Everybody in the organization is trained um, in the first uh, phase of the implementation and throughout the life of the customer uh, to make sure that the CRM is meeting the needs of the business as it changes. The results of our survey show that 70% of the uh, companies using inside the CRM on a daily basis, and they cite that 57% uh, were using it uh, because of the ease of use uh, of, the, of the product itself. Um, from the demo, you'll just see how intuitive uh, inside the CRM is compared to maybe some of the legacy CRM uh, software that you've been using before. Uh, another really important con consideration is productivity. Not only are the teams actually uh, using it, but um, they are doing so with net productivity gains. In this particular survey, we were concerned specifically with the reduction in time spent on non-value added administrative tasks and, and, and data entry. Uh, the number of users who reported spending less time on administrative tasks tripled after implementing inside the CRM. Uh, this in turn frees up valuable time for sales and delivery teams to focus on more engaging customer facing activities uh, such as face-to-face -face meetings uh, and deployment, uh, which is pretty significant uh, impact on the business. A third key metric that concerns CRM implementations is when to expect to see a positive ROI. Now, it's important to keep in mind that to calculate ROI from a CRM implementations, you're going to need to have historical data so that increases in key metrics like revenue and profitability before and after the CRM implementation minus the cost of the new system can be compared and understood. And inside the customers uh, consistently experience a healthy ROI on, on revenue growth results. Um, and in this particular survey, 70% uh, of respondents said they realized the positive ROI in less than six months. And this is something that we uh, keep uh, a, a pulse on, we're constantly monitoring with our customers just how effective the implementations are in driving a positive ROI. A final metric um, that uh, all of our uh, uh, our customers are very interested in uh, it obviously is just how positively 
has the implementation of the CRM impacted the growth of the company? And in this particular survey, um, our sample size said that, you know, on average across the board, uh, they had experienced about an 18% annual revenue growth uh, when implementing this, the CRM. So another really strong performance across the board on this key metric. Okay, so hopefully that gives you just a, a, a sense of uh, the type of impact that implementing a CRM will have on the key metrics of adoption, productivity, ROI, and revenue growth. So let's now uh, sort of turn uh, to the demo, purpose why we're all here, here today. And let's set this uh, demo up for briefly for Wes. And Sightly CRM is built to help every customer facing role in the company to see as much about the customers as relevant to them at any stage of the customer journey. And it can be customized to meet the very specific business needs of your business. So today we're gonna to show you how to do this for a solar business, specifically a solar panel company with locations across the United States. We're gonna show uh, at a high level four different roles, how they use inside ECRM to view customer data and engage the customer in the most meaningful and productive way possible throughout. Okay, so the, the, the roles we're gonna look at are there are four roles, as I said. Uh, first one is, uh, is Maria, and Maria is the SVP of operations. Uh, she wants to have access to real-time insights on all of the key business metrics, inventory, pipeline, by segment. And in this case, uh, we're gonna be looking at both uh, residential and commercial, revenue by channel, uh, and customer SAP metrics. So she and the rest of the management team can make better decisions for, for the company. Then we're gonna take a look at Mandy. And Mandy is, is, is responsible for marketing in the business. Uh, she wants to be able to segment the, the market by audience uh, and segment, again, residential and commercial, create engaging customer journeys for each of those segments, and generate more pipeline for, sales, for the sales teams, all with the seamless integration of the CRM system. Uh, so she doesn't have to worry about, you know, syncing data between systems, which can be uh, uh, quite a burden. Uh, Chris, um, our third persona here, he's going to need to have uh, his own dashboard as well. As you can imagine to manage his, uh, his business uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, they, he needs to clearly define, he needs clearly defined processes to help manage leads. Um, and he needs uh, workflow automation to help with data entry and a lot of mundane tasks that often plague CRM, CRM implementations um, so that he can focus on, on closing deals faster, basically. So, um, and the third, or I'm sorry, the fourth persona, Tom, um, it's, he's, he's concerned with ins installation. Uh, one of uh, the differentiators that Insightly has uh, over other CRMs is that we are very concerned that what, what, what gets sold gets delivered. So uh, we're gonna talk about how uh, we can automatically spin up a project uh, for uh, deployment teams and delivery teams and installations teams uh, like Tom's to ensure that, as I said, what gets sold gets delivered. So, okay. So let's jump into that. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen uh, with Wes. So Wes, uh, uh, four personas, right? So we got Maria, as I said, she's a SVP of operations. I'm guessing she's concerned with, uh, I guess, multiple lines of business, like we talked about residential versus commercial and inventory pipeline, so on. Tell us what she's looking at here. Yeah, so one of the biggest challenges that Insightly solves for is giving executives and managers the ability to quickly see their team's data at a high level in order to easily track each team's KPIs, such as deal progressions, project deliveries, delivery statuses, um, just ultimately the, the customer happiness, right? right. So uh, what we're looking at are some dashboard cards um, here that Maria has configured herself uh, because our dashboard cards are completely intuitive um, it's all drag and drop, point and click. There's no need for any custom code or any advanced uh, software or technology experience. Um, these cards are really designed um, to be able to show you the key metrics uh, that are valuable to you as an individual right. user. Right, so all this is, so Maria can build, first of all, she can build herself, which is, which is, mm -hmm. uh, which is a real uh, benefit. Because uh, she might want to configure new reports or new new cards or whatever she goes through her day, mm -hmm. um, or as she starts to fine tune her her dashboard, um, but she can 
Uh, this is right out of the box, right? It's feeding all the CRM data directly. There's no hooking anything up. It's all right there. Um, and she can build these cards herself. That's exactly right. I mean, these are not difficult to use at all. It was designed uh, with simplicity in mind. Um, you know, Maria wants to be able to see things like the multiple lines of business that they're running. They have residential, they have commercial, they have partnership programs. Uh, in solar, we see that a lot. A lot of businesses are, are trying to uh, segment out all the data within the different verticals that they're working. Right. So and these and these are configurable by business. There's, of course, it's standard out of the box, right? Mm -hmm. But you can customize these things to meet your your own specific business needs as you see fit. Yeah, and as you can see, there's a few examples here. We can look at our commercial sales pipeline versus our uh, residential sales pipeline. We can see all the different uh, uh, forms of revenue that we're generating by line of business using these dashboard cards to see how we're tracking with deals being closed versus the projects, uh, the installations, I should say, uh, that are being installed over time. Okay, and these are shareable as well across the management team, so they're all looking at the same, they're all looking at the same data, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Maria can share these cards with members of her team as well as um, different uh, members of the organization. So folks on the projects team or installation team, she can share these cards with individual people or team members. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of the folks from the other teams have shared these cards with Maria to brag sure. about how well their teams are doing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, cool. Um, all right, that's Maria. We might come back to Maria later on, but uh, let's talk to talk about Mandy, the marketing manager. We're going to go specifically to the marketing application that sits on the exact same uh, platform as the CRM application does, which has got lots of benefits. We're going to talk about that in a second. But this is, this is a relatively new product, although we've had a lot of uh, interest in it right out of the gate. Uh, Mandy, of course, is, in, is, is focused on, first thing any marketing person wants to do is segment. Mm -hmm. So she's going to want to look at uh, different, uh, different segments because obviously different messages are going to go to different segments and they'll have different uh, reactions as a result of that. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what Mandy's looking at. How does she you know, go after segment? How does she build? You know, how does she attract them? What does she do? Yeah, absolutely. So Mandy is concerned with the two distinct segments that residential and commercial uh, solar companies uh, are targeting. So she needs to be able to separate the people that uh, live within those different segments, commercial versus solar, into distinct lists and deliver different content to each segment in a different sequence, or as we call it, uh, using different journeys. So how do we do that? So we've got down the left hand side here, we see mm -hmm. all the capabilities available to, to Mandy, mm -hmm. everything from prospects all the way down to reports, whether it gets lists, how do, how, do, how, do the lists, how do the lists work? Yeah, absolutely. So lists are going to be essentially, if you will, uh, different types of buckets, uh, ways to put people uh, into categories and segment them out. I have all of my residential uh, prospects here, uh, just leveraging the different list views. So if I have uh, some residential folks that I want to add to a residential list, I can create lists to take them in. And all I have to do is uh, bulk select those folks and add them to this list. Residential. And I can add them to my residential prospects. Okay, so you that create, easy. yes, that easy. So you create, so all uh, underneath all of these applications, I mean, it's all connected, right? Sitting on the same data, data platform. We'll show how this uh, how, how all of that information moves through the, 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 the process from, from prospect right away to customer. But we've got to get them to be a lead first, right? So we've only got a list. There are a bunch of prospects. Mm -hmm. What do we do with those? Absolutely. So we're going to want to put them into that uh, residential list like we just did. So we can put them into a, a residential journey. Um, we're going to be able to do that um, by sending them uh, on this journey. Let me go ahead and pull it up for you. So yeah, because there's, there's a bunch of journeys I can, that I can, this is sent, oh wow, well, yeah, check that out. Yeah, so what we're looking at is just a standard uh, email uh, journey that we're basically taking all of the folks from our residential list and say we wanted to add them into our residential newsletter for say a summer promotion. Right. Um, and then the first step we're gonna do in the journey is just send them the email and then we're gonna add in a check to see if they opened it or not. If they don't open that email after, say, four days, we can resend them that email as a uh, if they did not type of uh, condition that we're checking for. 
Um, if they do open up that email, fantastic. Let's see if they click on any of the content inside of that email. Um, and if they do um, click on that, then we can go ahead and start to change information about them in real time. It looks, it looks, sorry, Wes, look really complicated. Um, but it's not, is it? I mean, a lot of the com conversation around what a, what a journey looks like happens before the build, but then mm -hmm. you build it out and sort of visualize and test it. And um, there's a lot of deep functionality here that uh, we could spend all day on. Yeah, there is a lot of great functionality, but as you said, it looks like it could be complicated, but it is very simple moving forward. If you do have folks that you're engaging with, all you have to do, if you want to give them good scores for opening your emails and clicking on your content, you can always update their score. Uh, and it's just as simple as adding in, say, 10 points to their score for cool. opening and clicking. So in all the content that, that is deployed along this journey, uh, we can build right, with, right within the application you've got email templates and you've got newsletter. Oh, here's the newsletter right here. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's all under one roof. And that was the, I mean, the whole goal of this journey that we're sending them on uh, is to see if they're going to click on something like the learn more. Yeah. You know, we want to see in real time, you know, how they're engaging with these emails. And as you saw in the journey, we were actually able to update the prospect record uh, if they clicked on that or not. Right. And all that, because again, it's a unified platform, mm -hmm. anything that, that happens on the journey automatically gets updated mm -hmm. and reps can actually see it. The sales reps on that side can see what's happening as well if they really want to do that. That's, that's exactly right. And um, the, the marketing and sales alignment dashboard I have here is, is a really great segue into the, the data transfer from the marketing tool into the sales tool and how both teams can be aligned uh, with the efforts that are being made from the marketing side. So if I'm you know Mandy and I want to be able to see uh, valuable information of, of how my marketing efforts are going, I can start tracking things like the pipeline that we're generating by campaign. Yeah. Maybe we've got folks in the solar industry who are doing case study videos or they're sending out newsletters or promotional videos and they want to see which of those pieces of content is generating the most revenue, the most opportunities. And as you can see here in the example we just used, who's opening that newsletter and who's clicking it, right? So here we can see uh, this, you know, Aaron Rod, Amanda, and all these folks have clicked on that learn more link that was in that email template. Okay, so let's, um, yeah, let's let's jump. So that's marketing. Um, Chris on the sales side, he comes in every day, uh, and he's obviously very interested to see what uh, what's going to come his way from a, a lead perspective. Um, but you know he's going to have his own dashboard too, where he enters into everything. Like he's come to the first day, every day, first thing he sees, mm -hmm. sees the dashboard, uh, so he gets a good snapshot of his business and his daily tasks and so on. So and again, this is beautiful interface. Um, but he's going to want to see leads any new business that's that's coming his way. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So Chris, you know, Chris could be, uh, you know, coming in here to look at all different types of data, but. If he wants to look at his own dashboard, he can s and see information about the revenue his team's generating and his forecasting, that's great, but he can also cherry pick some of those uh, pieces of data from the marketing tools, such as all the hot leads that are being generated from marketing. As you can see, Aaron Rod, that same person we saw in the marketing tool, he opened up that email uh, that he clicked on the uh, email that we had sent out. So marketing information passing right into a sales reps uh, cue for them to learn on you know, who he should engage with. Engage with uh, makes it very easy. Yeah, so it's really so you got you you jump straight into the lead record from the dashboard. You don't even have to go into the left hand. You don't have to go into the lead object. You just go you just right in from the from the homepage. Yeah, absolutely, and that's where Insightly really shines is this blade style view. It makes it easy for folks to just come in and just cherry pick pieces of data out of their dashboard so that it can really uh, better manage uh, their day to day functions. Um, but if they did want to go into the actual leads object and start, yep. uh, you know, managing their day uh, from here, they certainly could do so. Cool. Okay. So he's got a lead. He's going to work the lead. You're going to have a lead management process mm -hmm. that he's going to adhere to, right? Um, uh, tell us a little bit about how he manages his leads and move them through the move those through the opportunities. Absolutely. So just like, um, you know, every type of lead in uh, CRM, we want to be able to manage our own lead processes so we can add in different status statuses. Uh, what status is Aaron in? He's just kind of a cold marketing lead at this point who engaged with an email. 
we want to get, get them on the phone and we want to get some information out of them and move them through the statuses. I'd give Aaron a call, figure out a little bit about him. I'd get information about him, such as his monthly energy bill, uh, what type of payment uh, plan he would be interested in if he was trying to go solar. And then Insightly would be able to uh, start doing some calculations for me based off of his, just his monthly energy bill. Right, so we can start to do some uh, basic evaluation of the system size, possibly the number of panels, and the overall cost of the system. Um, but that's not to say that um, you know we don't have to capture all this now. We right. always capture it later. So this is again, again, we're just working. We're starting to build a picture of the customer and their needs, and mm -hmm. uh, we got some calculated fields behind the scenes. So we enter in some basic data that's just sort of qualifying mm -hmm. Aaron, you know, as a customer, and sort of where we need to help him and. And then we have all this calculation that goes on. So all of this information has been accumulated. We're building a, 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 you know, a better and better, clearer and clearer picture of what, what Aaron's looking for. And this is vital. This is the whole process of customer relationship management. It's all about building that, uh, that high definition picture of the customer that uh, using data so that we can better uh, tune into their needs and, and serve them as we go forward. Mm -hmm. so, he's, uh, so he's gathered that. I guess he's qualified, Aaron. Uh, a little more, so we're going to start to move that into the, move him into the opportunity stage. Um, so you're going to convert him from a lead into an up. Absolutely. So we're going to convert Aaron into a, an opportunity, bring him into the a residential solar installation opportunity. And here's where Insightly really shines. I'm sure a lot of people saw me kind of entering in some of that information about the roof, the system size, his payment information. All of that information is going to carry over into the opportunity that we end up generating uh, for Aaron uh, upon conversion. Uh, so from here, we're gonna be able to see uh, the opportunity has just been created. So it's a good, healthy opportunity. All of the data merged in from the lead and the system automatically started generating information for us. We got that wonderful residential pipelines. We can manage our sales process um, and all of that data carried in directly from the lead. What happens if Aaron was, was a commercial Lead. If Aaron, yeah, exactly. Good, great question. If he was a commercial lead, if we need to change it to uh, if the opportunity or the lead itself needed to be changed, uh, we can uh, select the 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 drop down here, and it will fire off uh, and change the layout and the structure of the uh, information here. So I, the commercial inventory uh, will then populate. Commercial fields will populate. Um, and then the system will be able to make it easier for the different lines of business right. to manage their data because their data is different. Right. So you're, yeah, if you're commercial and commercial sales side, you don't need, need to see residential uh, details. So, mm -hmm. so these dynamic page layouts are sort of cool. It just surfaces up data that only the data that a, a particular user needs. So it makes them more efficient and mm -hmm. doesn't give them stuff they don't need. Okay, cool. What about, so we, uh, we're, we've managed the opportunity, we're coming to close it down. I guess we, we're, we want to close it as a deal. That's, that's what Chris is all about. Yeah. It's got to get, the, got to get those commission checks coming in. So mm -hmm. what, how does he, what happens when he does that? Because it, the relationship really only really starts when you start to deliver on what was sold, right? Yeah, absolutely. So in the, in the detail section, we grabbed all the information about the opportunity and everything that carried in from the lead. But through the sales cycle, there's going to be things that we're going to do, like such as uh, create follow-up tasks and understand uh, their use case, their needs. We want to understand, uh, you know, who these people are. We want to send out emails, you know, possibly create events and meetings directly out of the web. Um, so that way we can manage our day-to-day -day with this process, such as changing the pipeline stages. Those automatically uh, kick off tasks and uh, reminders for us to, you know, let us know where we're at in the pipeline stages with all of our opportunities. Uh, and Insightly has actually a really neat feature that allows for you to uh, generate quotes. And those quotes will live directly on the opportunity record. So yep. if we want to uh, add in a new quote for Aaron's install and add in the appropriate products that are inside of it, we can go into the quote and we can add the products within our price book, such as these solar panels. And then we can change the quantity to 10. And this quote will sync up with the sales opportunity at $24,000. We can go ahead and sync cool. it here. And then if we want, we can generate that quote directly out of the system and it's all linked together. Right, so in that case, you can also, it's really important for, if you wanna give discounts on a quote, you gotta mm -hmm. get approval to do that. So that all gets routed to the, the necessary approvers as well before that can get a pen or a synced up with the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But once that, once that happens, 
you're pretty much good to go. Yes, and then another great feature is that your ability to add files and notes. Um, so all of these pieces of information are going to be valuable when we end up converting to a project, right? Yeah. So all the files, all the notes, everything we add in here, all this is going to carry over into the, the project. So every all the hard work the sales reps doing is ultimately going to be handed off, right? Right. So that's the beauty of this, right? The whole flow is, it's just it's just a free flow of information now. Uh, everybody involved in, in touching the customer in any way can see these data, right? They're going to be able to understand, you know, how they're progressing, how Aaron's progressing through the process, uh, which is really cool mm -hmm. uh, because you just, you just, everybody knows the same detail about, about the customer and nothing gets lost along, along the way. This is really, really cool. So, okay, so we're closing the, the op. Mm -hmm. and we have the option, which we more often than not want to take, mm -hmm. which is, to uh, convert to uh, a project. So that Tom on the installation side mm -hmm. is going to know exactly what they're going to, going to want to deliver on. Right? Absolutely, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna end up converting that opportunity. Um, but I, you know, I think real quick before we end up converting that, it's, it's really great to point out the uh, ability for the sales reps to manage all of those opportunities uh, in the different stages um, and to see where they're at holistically using that uh, Kanban view. Uh, to see where we're at with all of our opportunities, right? So ultimately what we're gonna do is convert this uh, installation into a project. And from there, we're gonna be able to uh, copy emails, files, and notes into the project. And we can go ahead and call this Aaron's Residential Installation Project. And then we'll convert it. And then we'll go ahead and talk about Tom. Okay, cool. So Tom now, so Tom's sitting, he's the guy that's getting all these orders from the sales teams. Mm -hmm. He's got a whole bunch of them. He's got to schedule, you know, the delivery dates, the, the look at know what the specs are, uh, knows what, you know, where obviously where the customer's going to be mm -hmm. and then set up the timing given, you know, locations and so on. Um, talk us through a little bit of that. What is Tom looking at and how does he get himself organized for the day? Sure. So we just came into the, the field service team, uh, the installation team, the project management team that Solar, uh, you know, clients of ours uh, like to leverage. Um, you know, the, the things that they care about the most are the projects that are being created today or projects that are going to be due in the next few weeks. Uh, tracking the installation hours, the, the delivery of these installs, um, the quotes that are being generated. So access to everything that has been uh, created from marketing to the the lead to the the opportunity all that data all that information has been passed along to ultimately be handed off to folks uh, like Tom so he can start to one allocate his resources to track the delivery lag time um, see which quotes uh, need to be signed or approved uh, as well as see like the total net profit of his team Okay, so I, I'm not sure what we're going to show today, but also Tom is going to be able to get out into the field with them with our mobile app as well and and uh, and be able to see all the same information he's got right here in this desktop uh, right put in, in in the palm of his hand uh, so that he's on site mm -hmm. he, uh, he doesn't have to worry about it uh, about that. Absolutely. And so here's that uh, residential uh, installation project that we had just created from Aaron. Um, this is where uh, Tom can come in whether or not he is a, um, you know, a project delivery manager or he's the one doing the install. He's going to be able to get all of the information and, and add in all the information, such as the amount of hours it's going to take, costs, what will ultimately be the profitability. He can add in that uh, residential installation pipeline. So this is going to be really big for the folks that are out in the field kind of managing their day-to-day, -day, right? So all that information we can see in the related section, such as the the call notes, the contacts that were linked to it, the opportunity, the people, all that information is in there for someone like Tom on the install team to manage um, and then take them through the appropriate pipeline stages. Okay, so that, thanks Wes. I'm gonna put, take the screen back. That was um, um, just one approach to um, um, how we would uh, implement solar uh, in a solar company. Of course, the great thing about Insightly is that it is um, um, tailorable to the very specific needs of, of, of the business. Um, the reason 
we talked a little bit about how uh, the data was flowing freely from application or from u one user to the next user. And really, in, in, in reality, what happens today in most situations is that each user is using a different application. Marketing has got a different application, uh, like a Marketo or a MailChimp or whatever, and then the CRM is separate again from uh, what might be the project delivery app. They all sit on different databases, um, which means that data has to be synced and oftentimes data, data gets lost. The uniqueness of Insightly is that all of those applications sits right on one unified data platform. So there is no syncing at the data layer whatsoever. And everybody, no matter if you're marketing sales or delivery, are looking at the same data set as it starts to build and move through um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the process of visitor to, um, uh, to, to prospect to lead and, and, uh, and to deal and then to customer delivery and onwards. Because once you know more about, about a business and the needs of that business, the better equipped you are to service their needs and broaden your relationship over time, which is the, which is the way to grow your business. Um, so that uh, is, is uh, the, the end of the, the demo demonstration. I do have one question that came in here from uh, Re Rebecca, uh, which says, like Parla, do you have the option, Wes, to include website actions as part of the journey? So if I'm, I'm thinking, you know, people are visiting or web, visiting certain web pages, uh, downloading white papers, um, are all going to accumulate a score for somebody as they move through uh, from a prospect to lead that phase of it. So purely in the marketing side of it, I know ourselves uh, we are we're the first uh, customer of of Insightly Marketing, and we've got very active um, uh, journeys that engage gauge prospects with opportunity to download uh, white papers with an understanding of where they'd be visiting the web, web, web page and that helps us to understand how qualified they are. Um, what about, you know, from, a, from, in, from this particular perspective? Yeah, I think that that's what our, our uh, overall solution was designed to do is to track and to manage uh, people based off of their behavior on your website, such as filling out forms, like you said, or the, the pages that they visited, how they got there. Uh, the website tracking component is a feature that uh, is available in our marketing tool. Um, it's very easy to uh, for us to bring in folks into our marketing tool and then track uh, where they go to your in your website. Um, and we're always here to uh, open up the discussion with our with our clients about that and how we do that. Okay, that's uh, that's all we got uh, on the questions right now. Wes, thank you very much. Thank you all for for joining us this morning. Uh, if you want uh, to get a personalized demo, please contact us at the number on the screen or email us at sales at Thanks for your time.